I'm back. Day three of tutorial miss. Uh, if you're new here and this is your first video of the month, what I'm doing is I'm uploading one video every day, all of December. So 31 videos in 31 days. A majority of them are gonna be tutorials. I would say probably 95%. And then I'm gonna have like a few other just special videos. But today I got something I wasn't really sure I wanted to share, to be honest. I haven't seen this effect anywhere. And I think I've just been sitting on it for like a year, year and a half. I mean, it's it's definitely a variation of effects that I've seen before, but I kind of been keeping this one in the vault for a little bit and I haven't really found a project to put it on and I kind of just want to share it. So if someone uses this in their next music video, you'd probably be the first one to use this exact effect. And obviously you don't have to copy me verbatim, but if you use like a similar effect, it will be the first, I believe. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into After Effects right off the bat. Uh, this effect can be done completely in After Effects and I'm just gonna show you kinda what I came up with. And as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's pretty crazy. I'm gonna break it down exactly. The main effect we're gonna be going over is this just like chrome looking overlay over someone. I think it looks pretty cool. We're also gonna be showing you how to do something like this. I've done something like this in my video before. You're definitely gonna to have to have a pretty good computer to do this. This took me quite a while to render. So when I'm going over the tutorial, I'm not gonna be really rendering out much. I'm just gonna be doing like one frame and showing you what that looks like. And then obviously if you extrapolated it throughout the entire video, then it would look like something like that. So let's hop into this tutorial tab here. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna import the clip wherever you have it. Mine's only a few seconds. And then you're gonna wanna control D or duplicate the layer and then go to this top layer and use the roto brush. And if you are not updated to the most recent version of Adobe uh, After Effects 17.5.1, uh, I'd recommend doing that because I think 17.5, I could be wrong, but I think it's 17.5 introduced the uh, Roto Brush 2, which is, it'll save you a lot of time when you're Roto Brushing because the first one was kind of garbage compared to what they now have. So that's a little tip. Just make sure if you're a cloud user, just go here and update like I, <laughs> I think I need to update all mine, but updated After Effects just for this effect here. And then you're gonna click this Roto Brush tool here and then double click on the clip. And what it's gonna do here is it's gonna bring you into a layer, layer tab instead of your composition. And then what you do is just outline where you want the effect to go. And then I have uh, it bound so you can zoom in with your scroll wheel. And then I just use H to move around. And the first frame, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure it's as perfect as possible because Roto Brush 2 is gonna take that first frame. It's gonna stick to that as best as it can. So you wanna really spend a lot of time on the first frame. And then after that, at least for the one I did, just because this effect doesn't need to be like super clean Roto Brush, I only did one frame and then it played through the whole entire thing. And like this isn't, it's definitely not an easy background for After Effects or the Roto Brush to. Uh, decide what's what but it did a really good job and I, I like I said I only did one frame so I was pretty impressed because before using the uh, Roto brush one or whatever it would probably broke out of the cycle just about every frame so you'd be going and basically manually masking but just like a little bit easier but this did a really good job so like I said just get as uh, perfect as you possibly can for the initial frame Oh, and shortcuts, sorry. Uh, if you hold Alt, it will turn this red and then that'll be negative. So like, say you didn't want it there, you could uh, move it back. And then obviously not holding Alt is positive. So I thought that would help. Also like, let me know in the comments if I need to explain that type of stuff. I don't know how uh, advanced or how familiar everyone is with every software that I use. Cause I feel like in some tutorials, I just, um, I assume you guys know a lot more than a, maybe like if you were a beginner or whatever. But then again, I guess this, they're like, there you are pretty complex effects. So there we are. And then we're just gonna click fit. So it goes to the frame and that looks pretty good. What you can go ahead and do now is go to the preview tab and then click the play button. And what it's gonna do is go frame by frame and decipher what's what and split. Like look, look how good of a job it's doing. Obviously you can go and fix some of that, but for this effect, since it's overlaying the subject, you don't really need to worry about the little things. And then once you're done, just go, go ahead and click freeze. And what that's gonna do is it's just going to lock in the position of each of those. And I already did that, so we don't have to wait through this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. But this is that layer. And what I recommend doing is just renaming the layers like Roto Brush Done or like Front Layer and then Background. That way you can just easily tell which one's which. And the main effect here, what we're gonna be doing is, so we're gonna be using the Universe plugins here and it's called Prism Displace. And you can go ahead and drag that onto the top layer. 
Uh, I just realized if you're still in the layer tab, you got to click out of that so you can see what it's affecting. This looks really crazy. It's not the Chrome that we went with, but it does look pretty cool. It's kind of, it reminds me of, especially with the purple in the background, the uh, Yamborghini High music video. It, it just, the color scheme reminds me of that. So what we can do right after that is go to HLS and type that in and then go to color balance and HLS, drag that on, bring the saturation down. Obviously you don't have to keep it uh, chrome or whatever, but I just always thought that was a pretty cool effect because I saw this Aries video. This is like where I got the main idea. See it drives by and it turns chrome like that. And I always thought that was super cool. It took me a while to kind of figure out how to do something similar and I wanted to make it something like chrome. All right, so now hopping back into the prism displacement uh, effect, now that we added the HLS and turned on the saturation so it looks chrome, we're gonna try to make this look a little bit more 3D now. So you can play with the glass refraction. Each thing gives you a little more of an effect. If you go into the negative, you can make a pretty cool effect with that. But I noticed if you bring it up a little bit more, it, it adds like more details or something. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but I thought it made it look more like a chrome casting of someone. And then the refractive index kind of does the same thing. Just adds the size of these puddles. I don't know what you'd call them. Just changes that. I kept it at one. And then soften just makes it look more soft. So if you drag it, like it's... <laughs> so this kind of looks like, what is it, Han Solo in, uh, in Star Wars. Like the casting or whatever. And then more, the more you drag it, it looks more like the uh, like Mona Lisa or something. So it's like a, it's like a scale. The more you drag it, it looks more like the uh, Mona Lisa or something. All right, so for, <laughs> first off... I said Mona Lisa, I meant Starry Night, whatever. But <laughs> it is unreal how quickly I came up with these and how accurate these are. Like, it literally looks exactly like the Han Solo thing. I'm looking at it right now. It looks perfect. And then Starry Night, it actually just looks like I just took the picture and made it black and white. It's wild. Yeah, I just wanted to say that while I was editing. I, I got a good laugh out of that, so uh, enjoy the rest of the video. So we're gonna reset this and I, the default's five. I'm gonna bring it down to like, now we're gonna do two. And then you can probably it around with the black levels and the white level. You can kind of see what it's doing. It almost reveals the background. You can do some kind of cool effect with that. And uh, if you move the white level, I think that's where you get more of the effect. You can see it's kind of moving the edges almost. So I'm just gonna find a spot where I think it looks most like he's covered in chrome. I think like something around there, 74 for my case, looks like that. And then you can add gamma. Obviously, everyone's video is going to be different because, you know, the colors or whatever. Just play around with these settings, and that's where you can get better looking effect. And I think I'm going to leave it somewhere at like 1.7, 3, I guess. And you can play with the warp mode. I'm going to leave it on mirror, but it's always an option. And then to make it look a little bit more 3D, what I did is I added Sapphire Glow. If you don't have Sapphire plugins, you can use uh, Normal Glow. I just think Sapphire Glow is a little bit better. And then I'm going to make sure I drag the HLS below that because I don't want any colors coming through. And then the first thing we're going to do is add a threshold. We're going to start, I always start with like 0.5 or something just to see where we're at. 0.4, uh, maybe like 0.45, I like kind of in between that. And then the glow right now is like really wide. So what you're going to want to do to make it almost seem like it's like shimmering off is just probably bring it down, I would imagine with your, uh, it all depends on what you're working with, but I like something like maybe like 11. And then I'm going to make the color of it just a little bit more gray. So it kind of fits the background. And then I like to drag it down to zero for the brightness and then just slowly drag up until I find something I like. So right there, a little bit under two. Probably could have been fine with just sticking with the normal two, but that's how I like doing it. And then to sell the effect a little bit more, I'm going to use uh, universe chromatic, chromatic aberrations here and drag that on. And what that's going to do is, again, dragging the color balance HLS behind that. Unless you want those edges, which I guess you could if you want. And then I like to turn on the blur here. And then you can drag the uh, radius to make it not take up as much. I'm just going to have a blurry like down here. And then I wish there was a way, I don't know if there is, maybe you guys know, uh, to change the location of it. Because it's what it's doing right now is the radius is based off the dead center point of the video. So like I'd want it to like kind of have it here, 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 here. I'm sure there's a way I could think of, but for right now, I think just dragging it to the edges works for me. I think that looks pretty cool. It doesn't do too much. It just kind of gives it like a, it gives the edges more of like a 3D effect. And then lastly, if you want the Chrome to kind of search Chrome, if you want the Chrome to kind of look like it's actually in the atmosphere, so like 
if it was, if he was chrome here, there would be like purple light reflecting off him because the background's chrome, right? It's just how like light works. So what I'm gonna do is drag curves on and then in the highlights, cause there's a lot of highlights, or I guess I could just drag it over the whole thing. I'm just gonna click the middle, drag up the red a little bit and then click on the blue channel, and drag up the blue a little bit, right? Cause red and blue makes purple or whatever color your background is, you would just do the same for that. So I think that just kind of adds a little bit more realistic look to it, I guess. So this is what we're working with so far. I'm just gonna render out a few frames so you can see. And then that looks crazy. I think I did a way better job making them look chrome in this one. So that's the main effect here. It's pretty cool. And obviously you can do this with different things too. You don't have to just do your like the person in the video. You can do it with, you know, just like props, phones, cars, like Aries, just a bunch of different things. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to mask out the person performing. And then how I had it come in is I just typed in displacement map. Use the displacement map effect. Displacement map. Drag that on. And then I went to effects, click down here, went to the first frame and then made, made zero. So you can have it come in from like sky like that. We'll do it that way for uh, this one since we did the, other, the opposite the other way. Just drag that. I just drag it until it's like pretty much all out. And you can, you can change what it's affecting. So what it's displacing, you can have it based on color. So each color is going to do something different depending on the color of your scene. You can do it on luminance, like how light something is. Saturation, you can do full. It's just like moves, basically just moving the image. So you probably wouldn't want to do that. Half, a bunch of these. So I'm just going to stick with red, I guess. And then keyframe. And then I, I think I'm just going to do like five frames. You can do whatever you want, obviously. And then go to zero. And then just playing around with these other settings. I turned edge behavior on and it just kind of changed what it looked like. And I think it looks cool. I think it looks cooler doing that that way. So that's what we're going to go with. And that's why you can make this effect look so unique. Like last time, I don't think I, yeah, since this is pretty intensive, what you're going to want to do is definitely save this Chrome. But yeah, last time, yeah, I, I had it, uh, I had it on, I think, or yeah, I had the opposite. So off. So that's just kind of a way to introduce the effect. I think it's a uh, kind of a cool way, uh, in the Aries video or whatever. What did he have? I think he just had it flicker or something. Yeah. Like on, off, on. So you could just do that by either, uh, just splitting the layer for one frame and deleting the middle. That's probably the easiest way. So that's how I do it. And then there's the main effect. And if you want to add something behind it, like how I had in this video, like that crazy, like ghost trail trippy, I don't know what you'd exactly call it. What you do is you just copy and paste. So control D and then we'll name this top layer because now this is the top layer and this is the one we're going to be changing. And then we can just name this ghost. And then you can add a bunch of different effects, but the main one is echo. I did this in a tutorial before. And then what that's going to do is nothing right off the bat. Really? Uh, I use composite and back and then I make like, I don't know, five to 10 echoes. We'll go seven kind of like happy medium. And then you can change the echo time. So the, so the closer it is to zero, obviously the shorter amount of time and the further away from zero, the longer the echoes are in between. So since we're working in negatives, so what I do is I think I'm just gonna go and make it a little bit more echoey. So 0 0.5, 0 0.05, sorry. And what that's gonna do is make it further spread apart. And then I go to decay. Decay does here is it makes each layer, so there's seven echoes, so each echo it's gonna be 20% more transparent. So it like, basically just like fades it out, right? And as you can see, there's already echoes behind him. And then what I did to make it colorful is I just turned off the HLS. And what that does is it makes the effect how, uh, like the main effect, if we were to turn off the HLS in this one, it'd make it look something like that too, which is crazy in itself. So maybe that's the look you're going for, but we're just gonna do it for this layer. And then I like to add some kind of blur, I think like cross blur. You can do like directional cross blur or whatever. And I'm just gonna go on the X radius and make it something like that. So they all, all kind of blur together. Y radius a little bit. And then it kind of looks like a star glow. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but play around with that. And then another thing you can do to make, you can do this to either layer, but I, I would suggest the background layer. Toggle uh, switches and modes until you see mode come up here. And then you can play around with the, the blending modes. So if you did something like color dodge, it would you wouldn't be able to see the effect too much, but it like adds some kind of different look 
I'm not going to go through them all. Some of the ones I really like to use a lot are Color Dodge through Lighter Color. These ones are good. If you want something like real different, you can do like Divide. That looks pretty crazy, right? We'll render out a few frames so we can see what that looks like. So my camera stopped recording. Hopefully it wasn't too long ago. Also, this took way too long to render. I didn't even do the full thing. Like I said, uh, it's pretty uh, intensive on your computer. So be careful adding all these effects if you don't have uh, the best PC. But here, this is what we kind of came up with here. We'll do, uh, do that so it's not trying to render it. And I think that looks pretty cool. Definitely, like, as you can see, just a different possibility of what it could look like just between these two. And if you guys want some, like, a f I think I'm going to do more videos with using the Roto Brush now that it's so easy. I think it's, like, a really, like, it's a very, well, like, overlooked effect. Besides if you use uh, Echo or whatever, or Echo. Ecto, the effect that uh, just about everyone uses on their videos. It was like a real big thing for a little bit. That one right there, oh, something went wrong. So I'm gonna do like a lot more like clone stuff. Also, you guys are like killing that uh, the video I did yesterday, the Og Lone Wolf paper rip effect. Uh, everyone seems to be liking that one a lot. It, uh, it's outperforming basically every video I've ever uploaded on my channel, like right off the first 24 hours. So as soon as I get my scanner, I'm gonna make like a huge pack of all those papers and stuff. So not just the free pack or whatever with the four pictures. I'm gonna make a huge pack, maybe like some stickers, tape, paper, textures, everything. And then we're gonna make a we're gonna make a bunch of videos on that. And also I'm gonna release the pack for everyone. So but yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, be sure to click one of the end cards and check out if you want to, you can start the tutorial miss from the beginning. I'm gonna have the playlist linked so you can like start from the first video. This is only the third video, so not too much catching up to do if you haven't seen the first two. But be sure to check those two out and then I'm gonna keep on updating that playlist so it goes all the way through December. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. But yeah.